Today we're going to focus on how our thinking affects our praying. I want you to listen very closely. I'm going to make a statement that if you really listen to it, it's life-changing. Because I, I want you to hear it. It's a very simple little statement. But it is just absolutely life-shattering and life-changing. It's this. What you truly, truly believe about God Almighty, our Heavenly Father, about the Trinity, about God, what you honestly, when you buy yourself, what you honestly think, your concepts of God, what you think about Him, say it to you again, is the most important thought you're ever going to have. Because it totally directs your life. And yet most people, most of us, don't even take time to even think about what we think about God. So I'm coming at it this morning because this will change your life if you hear what I'm saying. How you perceive Him, what you understand about Him, directly impacts how you pray and how you trust God. Is He good or do we just sing that? Or do we just say that God's good all the time, God's good all the time, and yet you carry on behind when something's going on? Is those kind of statements just church statements? Are those with your Sunday go to meeting folks? Are those uh, with your friends that you know love the Lord and they expect you to say something that sounds real Christian-like? Well, what do you think about Him? I'm talking about when things go your way, Oh, he's a good guy when it goes my way. What about when it doesn't go your way? What do you think about him? Are you like a seesaw? Up one minute, down the next, based on what hits you in the face. Where are you? I'm saying it again. It's the most important thought you'll ever have. I'll we'll give you a clue about learning to pray with God rather than to God. It's found in 1 Thessalonians 5. Rejoice always. Three things here. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now let me help you here. This is a very brief outline of how to align your prayers with the Lord's Prayer. That one scripture right there tells you how to do it, and I'm going to help you. Number one, rejoice always. Now, let me help you understand that one. It's not as simple as you think it is. It's a whole lot easier to hear the Lord when you rejoice in Him and who He is than complaining all of the time. Amen. Amen. So if you're not learning to rejoice... You're going to be just in the mully grubs all the time. So you'll hear him better by rejoicing. To say it another way, you will hear God's direction in prayer much quicker if you begin with rejoicing with him, delighting in him, celebrating him. Then I'm a happy camper with Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Rejoicing in him. Then it says, pray without ceasing. That's number two. The Lord wants to give you more than you ever asked for. Look at Ephesians 3.20. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than you might ask or think. He's going to do stuff for you. You can't even think about it being that good. When you're praying what he's praying, you can be absolutely positive the prayer's going to be answered. Praying with God instead of just to God. Number three. And everything give thanks. See, Thanksgiving takes you out of the circumstance and puts you in the love of God. 